Hi friends, welcome to EduTap and this is the claim lecture series for NABAD grade A and IBPS AFO 2019. Now telling you about this claim lecture series, here we are going to cover the concept lessons which are important for agriculture through various MCQs and in this particular video we are going to cover the agroclimatic zones. Now since this is part 1, so we will be coming up with another part which will be covering ACZ in the entire form. And telling you about our course for NABAD grade A 2019, here you can see the MRP of the course and it covers the videos, notes and MCQs as well as the worksheets. It's a full video course for phase 1 as well as phase 2. And currently we are running a discount of 15%. You have to use the coupon code EARLY15 to avail the discount. And let me just tell you about our other courses which are offered by EduTap. These are RBI Grade B for 2018, RBI Grade B 2019 and CTET 2018. Also we are offering the UPSC Indian Economy course for general studies which will be covering the, G uh, the prelims and main syllabus comprehensively. So presenting you the first MCQ of the series, how many agroclimatic zones are there in India as according to the classification of planning commission. So uh, you have been given with options like 12, 10, 11, 15 or 20. In case you are not able to answer this question, definitely you will be able to do it after this video. And your second question asks, which of the following agroclimatic zones has the highest cropping intensity? Now this question is again important and your options are Lower Gangetic Plain, Western Plain and Ghats, Trans Gangetic Plains, Island Region or Middle Gangetic Plains. Now if you are able to answer it well, if not you will definitely be able to answer after this video. First of all we will see what is an agroclimatic zone and then we'll proceed with the various zones. Now see agroclimatic zone is basically a land unit which is uniform in respect of the climate and the length of the growing period. So the length and the uh, climate of the growing period determines a particular agroclimatic zone and usually these are suitable for the various crops which are g uh, grown in that particular area. Now since this uh, has been uh, description has been given by planning commission way back in 1988-89 and it has divided our country into 15 different agroclimatic zones. As you know, the plan Planning Commission has now been reconstituted into the Niti Aayog and the Planning Commission does not anymore exist. But this particular uh, agroclimatic zone description is important for us. And these zones are basically based on the homogeneity of various natural factors like topography, temperature, rainfall, the cropping and even the farming systems and the kind of water resources they are using. As you can see in the picture here, the 15 climatic zones of India and now we are going to see all these 15 zones in detail. So moving on to the first zone. Our first zone is the Western Himalayan region and the second is the Eastern Himalayan region. So uh, this Western Himalayan region covers three states which are the hilly states that is Jammu Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand. So these are the states covered here. Now since these are hilly states so the climate is usually cool and humid here. The rainfall you can see here mentioned. The soil is predominantly alluvial. So basically it is going to support the crops like apple, peaches, apricot, pear, cherry and all the other horticultural crops. And one important thing I have mentioned for you guys is that saffron is grown in this particular region. So uh, it becomes important for us to note down. And moving on to the eastern Himalayan region, it consists of the entire northeast plus the state of Sikkim and some parts of the West Bengal. Now uh, all these seven sister states you need to uh, by heart them and these are the part uh, of the eastern Himalayan region. The climate is humid and subhumid unlike the humid one which was in the western Himalayan region. The main constraint here in this region is the soil erosion. As you know that there is abundant rainfall throughout the year in the northeastern states. So that is why soil erosion is a problem here. The major crops grown are the rice, maize, potato and tea. You see the Assamese tea is so much famous worldwide. And secondly, the rice is the staple food of, the, of this particular region. So uh, this was about these two regions. Moving on to the next. 
okay our third is the lower gangetic plains now the ganga plains are very much important and we'll be covering these zones in detail here the lower gangetic plain includes the region of the west bengal here you can see in the picture now here the rainfall is not as that much it's uh, about 1300 to 1600 mm so the climate is most moist humid or dry humid so it varies uh, dominantly between humid and the main crops grown apart from rice as you know rice is the staple diet here it's jute rapeseed and wheat so these are the important crops which are grown in the west bengal region and the rice from this particular region like burdwan rice have recently got the gi tags so uh, that would be all our second zone is the middle gangetic plain here in the picture you can see the states like up and bihar so first of all we have seen lower gangetic plain now it's the middle gangetic plain here as it is drained by ganga and its tributaries like son betwa ken so it is basically a fertile alluvial plain and again the climate is subhumid to dry humid you can see the rainfall is a bit less than the lower gangetic plain as it has been decreasing from the northeastern sides the main crops are here the water uh, water guzzling crops like sugarcane and paddy as well as maize and wheat so uh, uh, let us see our next zone okay it is upper gangetic plain and trans gangetic plains see upper gangetic plains we have seen the lower middle and now it is the upper gangetic plain it will be covering the western parts of up as you can see here now uh, the crops grown are uh, all the same like the middle gangetic plain that is rice wheat maize and sugarcane again we see the uh, rainfall is decreasing here the climate is more or less the same in the gangetic plains now this is important for us trans gangetic plains it includes these you can see in the map it includes punjab rajasthan haryana and chandigarh even the parts of delhi and important here is the ganganagar district of rajasthan is especially in this region so here rainfall is very much less you can see here important crops which are grown here include wheat sugarcane cotton rice gram all these are so important crops and this particular region is very important as i have mentioned here the crop intensity is highest in this particular region so you see haryana punjab are basically the rice growing states although it is not the staple diet of the people here still the cropping intensity of all these crops is very much high okay our seventh agroclimatic zone is central plateau and hills so these are the states covered you can see it basically covers the parts of rajasthan then it covers up as well as madhya pradesh so the climate is usually arid since it's in the vicinity of rajasthan and the rainfall has decreased you see here it has uh, gone down to 400 to 1500 mm so since this is a dry area so main crops grown here are jowar bajra even paddy is grown uh, when irrigation is provided and uh, millets oil seeds are very important then cotton is again important sunflower and wheat and gram as well so these are the various crops which are grown in this particular uh, agroclimatic zone and since we have covered seven agroclimatic zones let us see if you are able to answer this question now the question was how many agri agroclimatic zones are there in india so as you know our answer is 15 and you even know if it was not men mentioned in the question this division has been given the, by the planning commission of india and our second question was the highest cropping intensity zone and now we know it's the trans gangetic plain which covers haryana punjab parts of rajasthan delhi and chandigarh so now you know and you'll be able to answer these questions well so thank you guys in in case you have any query related to our course and our offerings or you want to know anything more about this exam you can just drop us a mail at hello at rate edutab.co.in you can even call us anytime at 8146207241 and you can visit our website also that is www.edutab.co.in okay so before going please note down the link of the telegram channel i've mentioned for you guys it is also mentioned in the description below here you'll be able to find all the content sheet of this particular series here so just go and download it right now and please do not forget to click the like button and subscribe to our channel and do share this video thank you guys have a happy learning